who are just um, thank you Lord, that you can, you've through, the, through this series Lord, you've shown how we can't how we can't measure up to your to your law Lord and our need for you Lord and uh, just please speak through me Lord tonight and just guide me Lord and do this name Amen. All right, so I have the ninth commandment, which is lying. So it's kind of kind of flip off a little bit um, because. <laughs> no. Thank you. And so, um, ninth commandment, which is based, which is um, thou shalt not lie, or more specifically, um, as we talked about in Exodus 20, verse 16, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So this is a law from God. God is basically telling us um, to tell the truth. God is telling us that the the minimum requirement of the ninth commandment is just to, t- to speak the truth, to just be truthful. And how how can we not do something so simple as tell the truth? And I mean, throughout the Bible, um, I mean, you can see that throughout the Bible it talks about how a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. We've all told lies. I've told a lie. If you would say to yourself now that you haven't ever told a lie, you're probably lying to yourself right now. <laughs> And Interesting. God sees lying as something huge. In Proverbs uh, 12, verse 19, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. In, Pro- in Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19, there are six things that God hates. Six things that God hates. I, when I was I was doing when I was researching different things about uh, lying and punishment related to it, um, I thought this was someone's commentary on it. But it says right here in Proverbs. 6, verse 16 through 19. These are the things that God hates. Seven that are abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked flames, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who bears out lies, one who sows the scores among brothers. Lying is one of the top things that God hates. And so the question I have is, I mean, is God not as strict as he once was, as he was in the Old Testament, where we see the Israelites repeatedly disobeying God and then punishment and wrath coming upon them and many of them dying because of their sin? Well, according to Malachi 3, verse 16, he doesn't. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, O children of Israel, are not consumed. God doesn't change. Psalms 102, verse 27. <coughs> but you are the same and your years have no end. God doesn't change. He's the same. God is not man that you should lie or a son of man, that he should change his mind. He has said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and he will not fulfill it? God will do what he says. If God hates sin, sinning such as lying, God is going to God is going to punish punish whoever tells lies. But if God's if God stays the same, where's the wrath for lying? I don't know about you, but the worst punishment I ever get for lying might be I get grounded by my parents or something. Where, why is mean, the punishment for lying? Why hasn't God come and, and punished us for telling lies? Well, according to Romans 2, verse 1 through 8, Therefore, you have no excuse, O man. Everyone who judges for a passing judgment on you condemn yourself, because you judge, practice the very same things. I mean, just so you guys, this is just a little, I include this little bit of the verse just so you guys know, I'm not judging you. You, I'm just trying to reveal to you guys how prevalent sin is and how something as simple as lying is something that we can't measure up. I I can't tell the truth. I mean, if I can't tell the truth, what would you, if I tell you guys a lie, what would you call me? Liar. I'm a liar. And so we, we're all liars. We've all told a lie at one point in our lives. And so continuing the verse, um, we know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. So God's judgment will fall effectively on whoever tells lies. Do you suppose, O man, you who judge those who practice such things, yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead to repentance? That's the reason why God's wrath hasn't come is because out of his kindness, out of his grace, he's giving us time so that we can repent and turn from our sins and we can't escape, the only way we can escape God's judgment is through His Son, who lived the life we should have lived, not the death we should have died. Um, God, 
God's wrath is coming. I mean, God's... In Revelation 6, verse 12, it talks about, they cry out with a loud voice, O Lord, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a, a white robe and told to rest a little longer until a number of their fellow servants and brothers should be complete for who were to be killed as themselves have been. So this is God. Basically, you have the, the people that have died, the saints. You have people like Elijah and all the other prophets that are up there, and they're, they're telling God, why, why don't you come and save your people? Why don't you come and bring justice to the, to the unrighteous? God, the people. The saints in heaven are crying out, why don't you bring justice, Lord? And God's telling them to wait, so that way in order that we might be able to be saved because of God's grace and kindness to repentance. <clears throat> so kind of, so in closing, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law we can by the flesh couldn't do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the spirit, but according to the, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. God has done what we couldn't do. God has done by fulfilling the righteous requirement of the law. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us. For those who live according to the, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who walk according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For, for the mind that is set on the flesh cannot please God, does not submit to God's laws. Indeed, they cannot. Those who are in the Spirit, those who are in the flesh cannot please, please God. But you, however, are not in the flesh, if in fact this the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of God dwelling in him does not belong to him. So if you don't, if you have the Spirit of God in you, there is life and peace in Jesus Christ. If you don't have the Spirit of God, then it's, it's death. That's the all, that's the that's what the penalty of sin is: death. We all die. We we aren't. We can't. We can't save ourselves. We can't. As, <coughs> As I read earlier, um, we can't save ourselves. We can't escape God's judgment. And Jesus Christ is the only way that we can be saved. In Matthew 24, verse 44, Therefore you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Repent and turn from your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We don't know when God's coming. No one knows. It could be an hour from now. It could be a day from now. It could be a week from now. We don't know. And God... God's got God, the time that we this past hour that we've given is that we've had together is just God's grace. I mean, it's God's grace that He hasn't come back yet. He's giving us time to repent and turn from our sins and see our sins. If you repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Jesus is the only way that you can be saved. Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Jesus, for just this um, Ten Commandments series, Lord, just showing us how gracious and merciful you are and how we can't keep any of these commandments, Lord, and how you extend your grace to sinners like us who don't get what we deserve. We deserve death, Lord. The wages of sin is death, Lord. And you, you choose to save us from our sins by sending your Son on the cross and dying for us. For those who are... For those that hear this talk tonight, Lord, just please work in their hearts. And Lord, those who are saved, Lord, just help this talk to be an encouragement and reminding them of the, the wonderful work that you've done in their lives, Lord. And please, Lord Jesus, let this speak to those who aren't saved, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap it out!